In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And a Merry Christmas to all of you. And let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy 
at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope, 
and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Well, they were there, the, co- the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. <clears throat> In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood around them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The Gospel of the Lord. Each year on Christmas, when we come to church, and even in our own homes, we look for a Christmas scene, 
It's probably the strongest symbol that we have of Christmas. And yet it's only 800 years ago, on this night, that a poor monk, a preacher by the name of Francis, in the town of Assisi, decided that the poor people who lived around him should be able to see with their own eyes what it was like the first Christmas night. And so he got a real live baby and real people and real animals and they met in a barn and they celebrated their Christmas mass there. And that custom of the crest then spread out quickly because he was so beloved throughout Europe and beyond there, indeed, to the ends of the world. We love it because we see in such simple form the whole mystery of Christmas. We see the simple surroundings, not even room in the inn, because they had to come to their ancestral homeland, Bethlehem, the city of David, and the best they could do was some kind of a place kept for the animals. We see Joseph, the man, the righteous man, who was confused when he heard that his beloved and betrothed was with child, but accepted the word of an angel that this child was through the Holy Spirit and determined he would become a suitable foster father for this child. We see Mary, the young virgin, who encounters the words of an angel telling her that she will give birth to the Son of God. She wonders how this is possible. For she is a virgin, and she is told that the power of the Holy Spirit will bring this about, and she accepts to become mother of the Son of God. We see the animals whose home was the place where Jesus was welcomed. In a certain sense, they were the first of creation to give a place to him. We see the shepherds who come from the fields where they were the first representatives of Israel to hear the news that the Messiah has finally been born, the long-awaited one. We see the Magi, the wise men coming from the east, following a star, wondering what it means, and presuming that it means something very important, a great birth. And they will become the first representatives of all the nations from which we all come and our ancestors come. Beautiful thing, and at the very heart of it, we see a little child, a baby, totally dependent on Mary, on Joseph, even the animals who gave up their manger that he would have a bed. Not just any child. But the eternal Son of God there at the beginning of creation, who on that night, and after long preparation through the scriptures, entered into human flesh and was born one of us, Son of God and Son of Man. And so on this beautiful Christmas Eve, I wish all of you a happy and a holy Christmas to you, to family with whom you are visiting in these days, and to family and friends who are far away. May all of you know the blessings of this Christ child who entered into our human world, our human flesh, in order to bring salvation to us all. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And together we place all of our needs and all of our prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, as he offers his blessing to the city of Rome and to the whole world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our diocesan family and our Bishop Christian during these holy and joyful days of the Christmas octave, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and homeless and refugees of war and aid workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families and friends and for those who are separated from us by distance or disagreement, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for families who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Bob Chenier, Wayne Northrup, Nellie Gay Turner, Jeff Craig, and Al Corbett, uh, especially those who have left us since our last celebration of Christmas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for the gift of this beautiful feast, for our families that it gathers together, we ask you to bless each and every one of them through Christ our Lord. And please be seated while our offertory is gathered. Somebody's going to have to help with that offertory. I'm looking for volunteers. Want to? Pray, brothers and sisters, 
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, <clears throat> the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for their forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. (laughs) 
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death for Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <clears throat> Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. <clears throat> Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them <clears throat> into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share some sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us for Mass this evening. God's blessing upon all of you and your families. Thanks again to our sacristans, servers, musicians who serve us so faithfully. The Lord be with you. And bow down your heads. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his countenance and give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And go in peace. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>